Now let's move on to today's perspective, and it's all about the lives of people in the Democratic Republic of Congo, really struggling through the coronavirus pandemic there, from people working to keep the country's markets going, to children working from home, just uh, under the light from their mobile phones as school was cancelled and power far from certain. It's about those spreading the word about coronavirus there, and those were just trying to carry on as normal. My guest today is a prize-winning British-Canadian photographer who's just put together the uh, 11th Carmignac Photojournalism Award, working with local photographers in the DRC. And many of the photographs are now on display, in fact, in central Paris. Finbar O'Reilly, thanks very much for joining us on the programme. First of all, just tell us how this all um, came about in the first place, can you? Well, so the every year the Carmignac uh, Photojournalism Award um, devotes their uh, they nominate a laureate who will do a year of work normally in an environment uh, a country. So it usually has to do with human rights or the environment. It's previously been the Amazon. It's been the Arctic, and the the project for this year was uh, last year was Congo. And um, normally one photographer or two photographers will go and work, but I was interested in seeing how I could work with Congolese photographers. Um, and with the coronavirus, that um, accelerated because I was less able to travel and it gave me an opportunity to really um, tap into the network of Congolese photographers that I've got to know over the 20 years or so that I've worked in the country. And so I just kind of contacted them and got them to send in uh, story ideas. We talked about story ideas, and then they would uh, send me their photographs of what life was like during the pandemic, how people in Congo were dealing with the situation, coping with it, and uh, and managing the challenges of not having proper access to water or electricity, um, and then other issues around security and some of the conflict that's ongoing in parts of the country there. And together, we, we had this project called Congo in Conversation, which was an online online uh, project that published uh, a couple times a month. And then we've uh, since produced a book of that work by these dozen or so Congolese uh, photographers and visual journalists. So it kind of morphed, and, didn't um, it? Because, I mean, originally you were are... supposed to be involved in taking the pictures, but obviously it, it, because of coronavirus, you, were, you weren't really able to do that. Yeah, well, I mean, I had I had the idea of, of partnering with some Congolese photographers uh, as part of my project as well, but but this just accelerated that idea, and so um, really it, it put the the sort of the power of the storytelling into the hands of the Congolese journalists, which in many ways is as it should be, um, rather than somebody from outside necessarily coming in and telling the story of a country that they're not from. This is this is actually a good development, and as we saw last year with a lot of the calls um, for equality and justice around the Black Lives Matter movement, this is as relevant and more relevant than ever to have the, the storytelling power uh, in, in the hands of Congolese journalists telling the, shaping the narrative around their own country, really. Let's talk about a few of the photos. I mean, some of the ones which I've noticed, we've seen some of them already, but I'm sure we can see them again. The photos of the markets in particular and the people as well trying to get the message um, out to people uh, of coronavirus as well in some of those pictures. Yeah, so really the, the, the photographers and visual journalists who work on this project are part of a younger generation of Congolese who are trying to bring around more positive change. They're tired of, of the poor leadership that's existed in the country, which is a legacy of many complicated things uh, dating back to colonialism. And what you do have, though, is, is a... a a population that is, uh, for the most part, fairly impoverished, having to live day to day in terms of um, not having access to electricity, so they have to go to the markets to buy their food, and people are surviving of what they'll make each day. So it's not like here in, in France or Europe where we can go to the supermarket, buy supplies for a week or two, put it in the fridge, stock up. That's not how it is in a place like Congo. People need to buy and sell almost on a daily basis, which means going to crowded markets, which of course can lead to the spread of, of the virus. Um, and and, and so these are the kinds of issues that that the the journalists themselves were experiencing through the pandemic, and they were illustrating their own lives as well as the lives of of their fellow Congolese. There's a really nice one as well of the the girl um, working from home, obviously her school clothes, using her mobile phone light in order to be able to to do her homework. 
Yes, this is a photograph by Arlette Bashizi, a, a young photographer based in the city of Goma, and it's a picture of her sister. And this is one of the things that was important for us was for, for the photographers to be able to show their own lives, their own families, and the situation that they were living through. Of course, we had to be concerned of, of their health and their safety, so we were not asking um, the photographers necessarily to go out and expose themselves or others to, to any kind of health risks. And so we did discuss ways that they could illustrate the story uh, through their own experiences. And this is a perfect example and, and a beautiful photograph of, despite schools being closed, despite a lack of electricity, this young uh, girl is, is studying at home using the light from her mobile phone. And it's a perfect example of, of how people are, are coping and adapting, as we all are, globally. And, and this is part of it. The Part of the idea behind the project is to um, include Congo and the Congolese in this global conversation that's ongoing around the pandemic. Because as we've seen, it's not something that can be fixed in one corner of the world and, and not addressed in another because we're all interconnected by this. Yeah, Finba, you talk about adapting there. I mean, it's obviously great that you were able to to at least get involved in this and continue with the project working from home. But what about for you personally? I mean, is it, presumably it's been a highly frustrating year for yourself and other people in, in your profession as well. Certainly across the profession, we've, you know, people who travel, photographers who travel, journalists who travel, we've, we've had our, our wings clipped by, by this and, and our livelihoods. Um, and it's a, it's a big problem for, for photojournalism not to be able to be out there. But with regards to this project specifically, it's been the contrary of frustrating. It's been hugely rewarding to be working with such talented Congolese photographers, uh, photographers who often aren't given the platform and the profile that the Carmignac uh, Foundation has been able to provide with this. And it really just shows the degree of talent that exists in the country. And it's been a real honor and a pleasure working with these journalists who, who are telling these stories and telling them incredibly well um, with a with high aesthetic level of work and uh, a deep integrity and, and passion for what they're doing. And people who can visit the exhibition, which is outdoors in Paris. Uh, so, you know, I would encourage people to go and see the, the quality of this work. Um, it's been hugely satisfying and, and it's been it's been such a, a rewarding process for all of us at the Carmignac Foundation that the grant that I received to do this work uh, initially last year has been rolled over to a second year so we will continue with the project and and have more exhibitions later this year wonderful to hear your passion finbar o'reilly thanks very much for uh, joining us there and uh, that exhibition as finbar was saying it's called congo in conversation you will find the photos uh, on the gate around the tour saint jacques in paris if you have to be happen to be uh, in the city at the moment or of course on the website as well of the uh, carmignac Foundation. So do uh, look them out if you want to have a look at uh, some of those photos which we've been showing you over the last five minutes or so.